All right, well, speaking of water life, our next story covers the practice of boat building, which goes back thousands of years. Our Rebecca Ward visited the Aleutian Islands in the U.S. Upper Northwest, where boats have long been an important part of life. And to pursue their prey, ancient Aleuts used a small, quick kayak that the Russians later called a badarka. The boats are unique to the region and are still made today. Take a look. A lot of indigenous boats from Africa are, most of them are dugouts where they start with a big log and remove everything that doesn't look like a boat. And we take the little splinters and tie them all together and make it look like a boat. Corey Friedman is teaching a handful of students at the Center for Wooden Boats in Seattle how to build a badarka, a kayak type craft indigenous to the Aleutian Islands. What makes it real conducive to our uh, culture today is uh, the lack of materials. We use very, very little materials, thus our boats are the lightest in the world. In class, the boats are made pretty much the same way they would have been made hundreds of years ago, with the help of some power tools and without the skin of an animal. As you can see, we don't use any jigs or forms or molds or, or uh, any type of assistance like that. They're all done, built like sculptures, freehand, uh, so it's more of an art than a science. The boats are also built without the help of a plan or drawing. And despite the students' woodworking knowledge, the project is a challenging one. The entire structure, there's no glue, there's no screws, there's no nails. This is all, we, we, use, we use bamboo, but any kind of little doweling to, to peg the parts together. And then, and then as you can see up here, uh, it's all lashing. You know, the, you know the, the, the native lashing, of course, would have been sinew or uh, uh, cedar fiber, that kind of thing. We use a, a, it's a wax impregnated nylon cord. Traditionally, he says the Aleuts used the Vidarka as a hunting boat. The, the Aleuts would, would chase down uh, seals and sea lions uh, in this boat. So it's a very, very fast boat. Uh, I, I've heard that there's evidence that the, 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 when, the, when the Russians showed up in the area, they found the, the natives paddling along at six, seven, eight, ten knots. Chasing, chasing seals. Building a sleek little boat like this takes about nine days in Friedman's class. And although the boats look pretty much the same, Friedman says each one is unique to the person and personality of the builder. Not just their anatomy, but we actually uh, match the dragon friction to their horsepower, and the boats are shaped actually to their personality. Uh, sounds hokey, but if one person's more competitive than another, we're gonna have different shape boats. All, they, all those things are taken advantage of. The students here at Seattle Center for Wooden Boats are all adults, but Friedman says he also teaches the art of boat building to a much younger group of students in Alaska. With a government grant uh, where they pluck uh, indigenous youth, the teenagers uh, 12 to 14, from villages all over the state. It's a leadership program, and the boat building that we do is uh, one facet of what they learn there and at the end of camp for about 10 days to two weeks, they actually uh, go on an expedition using the boats that they built. Friedman says he's had a passion for boat building Stroke. since childhood. And when it comes to sharing that passion with kids from the region where the boat was first made. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And that's your story. Rebecca Ward, VOA News.